you couldn't say we're short of diagnostics. A fresh business confidence survey seems to hit the media every few weeks. How much attention do you pay to them? You pay a lot of attention, particularly the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research. That's a quarterly survey, whereas the ANZ Bank is a monthly one, and the NZIR has been around for a while, so there's a lot of credibility given to that. Do they influence your investment decisions? No. And if so, how? Not really, but we do look at them very carefully. We, we need to target and to find out what's happening in the business sector in New Zealand. I wouldn't say it influences it, but we do pay close attention to the surveys. The latest survey published last month shows business confidence falling sharply uh, for the second quarter in a row. How do you account for that? Well, we think that's a lot to do with the change of government. I mean, what happens is people get comfortable in an environment where things are reasonably consistent. And when there's a change, there's, there's apprehension, there's concern. So we think that is a response to a change in government rather than a response to the change in the policies of a new government. We're experiencing historically high rates of GDP growth, low interest rates, low inflation, low unemployment. You know, the New Zealand economy still looks like the rock star economy. So how do you get to be pessimistic in the face of all that? Because the nature of an election campaign is pessimistic because, for example, if you're in opposition, you're, you're telling people how poorly the existing government is doing. So you go through a period where there's deeper analysis of what's happening in New Zealand. And a lot of it, particularly as you've got opposition parties, are going to be negative. And when you come out of it, and then you have a change in government with probably the Greens and NZ first in the coalition with Labour, it just kind of reinforced that so you get a concern amongst business people. But that doesn't necessarily mean it will last. Is it just some kind of sulk that business was looking for a return of a national government and they didn't get what they wanted? Oh, well, there's a combination of that. You certainly say the business community would be 80 to 90 percent supportive of a national staying in power. But we're not looking at the Clark government, Winter of Discontent, part two? I don't think so, but it's very hard to say at this stage. This government has only been around for 100 days. I mean, they have done certain things that have appeased business, like joining the TTP organization, the, the new arrangement, that treaty. I mean, that was probably a bit of a surpri surprise, and I would um, imagine that the next surveys will be a little bit more positive, the business surveys will be more positive than the last ones. So trying to connect the way businesses say they're feeling and the experience on the ground. Do you see something substantial changing in the real economy that would justify any sort of hemorrhage of optimism? Not immediately at the moment. Um, the only sign is the housing market and it's hard to pick it up what's happened so far this year. We get conflicting reports that it's picking up in some instances and it's, it's still a little bit difficult. Housing is very important to New Zealanders because they have so much of their wealth tied up in it and a lot of new uh, house owners have borrowed money. So therefore the housing market is the one that we watch the most carefully. Are we seeing any weakening in business profitability? No. We're, we're moving into another reporting season, aren't we? Yep. It starts in about uh, around the 12th of February and we will be watching that very carefully. So it's not just the figures, the historical figures that is important, it's what companies are saying for the second half of the year. That's the six months to the 30th of June 2018. The share market has been partying, at least up until the latest jolt. What connection, if any, is there between business pessimism and the actual performance of the market? Well, if you look at the market over the last 13 months, which is the 13 months to the end of January, our market has been up 13 months out of 13. So it's been parting in a big way. So you've got to say that it's been reasonably confident, even after the election and during the election campaign. Is there a relationship? There is some kind of a relationship, but the relationship of our share market is much stronger to what happens in global share markets than what happens to business confidence in New Zealand. So that's the important relationship, is with global markets. Looking at the fall of the Dow and the fall on other world markets that immediately followed that, uh, you've got people saying, don't panic. The fundamentals of the global economy, and indeed the fundamentals of the New Zealand economy, are sound. Is it time to panic? 
No, it's not time to panic. I mean, certainly a correction was overdue because we've had such strong share markets over the last 13, 14, 15 months. And what happened in Wall Street, I think it got a little bit too exuberant. People were borrowing money to invest in exchange traded funds. And then you get a technical correction. But we believe that it's a correction, although we don't see a recovery coming straight away and that we're not in a bear market. However, if people are cautious about it, they should move into a more conservative investment approach. You can dial down the risk quite easily in today's environment. So if you are feeling a bit nervous, just be a little bit more conservative and move away from more high-risk funds to more low-risk funds. Is that what you'd be doing? Well, personally, I don't do it myself because I, I, I look at uh, things on a long-term basis. And, you know, it's proven to me over my 40 years plus in this industry that you're better in high-risk assets. You've got to be able to accept the downturns when they occur. But no, I'm much more orientated to being in high-risk assets rather than lower-risk assets. Is there any opportunity coming out of all this turbulence? There's always opportunity, um, but there's no doubt that share markets have done exceptionally well over the last eight, nine years, even 10 years, and therefore valuations are quite high. But there still will be opportunities. I mean, we see plenty of opportunities out there, but they are more selective. They're not broad-based opportunities. A broad-based opportunity is when a market has fallen quite substantially and everything looks cheap. There are things that look cheap now, but the market in general is more fully valued than it has been in the past. So therefore, if people feel a little bit cautious about the market, it might be not a bad time to be a little bit more conservative in terms of their investment approach.